Good day, my schoolers. This is my school channel, and my name is Abiola. For this video lesson, we are going to study triangles and polygons. Of course, we are going to focus on the theorems surrounding triangles, or you can call it theorems on triangles. So, do not go anywhere, stay with us, and we will be right back. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. So right here we have triangles. So let's kick off with the definition of triangles. So we have here a three-sided polygon that has three angles, right, vertices and sides. All right. So the sum of the interior angles of a triangle is equal to 180 degrees. So um, let's run through that definition together. So we have three sides, right? So a triangle is a three-sided polygon. So we have side one side two and side three some we call it edges right okay so you can see a to b a b to c then a to c of course in no particular order then of course there should be three angles okay so you have angle a angle b angle c and all of these angles should sum up to 180 degrees let's move ahead okay yeah, so we have another presentation here. A three-sided polygon, you know, we have straight sides and they are closed. That is one thing that actually um, distinguishes a polygon. The sides, you know, the line segments, the set of line segments, they are actually closed and they do not uh, cut across each other. So look at this, just um, emphasis sake. So you can see we have um, three sides. You can see, so uh, this actually represents um, line. You can call it line, line segments or segments. Okay, because we don't have a specific notation. So I can just do a generalization. So I have AB, you can see AB, you can see BC, you can see AC, and you can see the angles A, B, and C, and three vertices. Three vertices. So vertices we are that's actually a point where two lines actually meet, right? Two se two line segments meet or they intersect. So you have it here. This is a vertex here, this is a vertex here, and this is a vertex. And right there you form angle so where uh, these two segments these two lines where they meet they form a vertex here so that is the angle we call angle a and that is how the whole system works for the entire setup the next slide so what are the parts of a triangle i believe um, we should be well conversant with this but let's just do um, a quick recap so we have this okay we have the vertex vertex so you can see this is a vertex you know, like I said, where two um, line or line segments meet. Okay, so you can see this line, this line, they meet and they form an angle. This and this meet, this one and this meet, and they form an angle. This and this meet here and they form an angle. So we have uh, three vertices, right? We have sides. Some will call it edge, like I said. So we have sides, you can see as well. Then we have angle. So these are the major parts of a triangle. The next slide. So, um, what are the types of triangle? Basically, for this presentation, I'm going to um, classify triangles, you know, based on two uh, concepts. Now, the concept of sides and the concept of angles. So, if I want to classify uh, triangles based on expression of the sides, we know that um, all triangles should have three sides, of course. So, that will not be number. That will be the expression of the side. So, we can have equilateral triangle. This is a triangle that actually has three equal sides and as well three equal angles. So you can see all the sides are equal. So if this is um, three centimeters, this will be three, this will be three. Do we see that now? So we have what we refer to as the isosceles triangle. It has two equal sides. So you can see these two sides facing each other, they are actually equal. And the base angle right here, they are also equal, right? The opposite base angles, they are equal. Then we have the scaling triangle. It has no equal sides. So all sides have various or varying um, measure right okay so we can also classify triangles by angle so we have the acute angle you know it has a three angles less than 90 degrees right so we have the right angle triangle where you use your pythagoras theorem if you do not forget um, that so you can see right angle triangle so basically this is your angle 90 um, degrees then we have your obtuse angles as one angle that is more than 90 Degree. So basically, this is the classification that we're going to run for this presentation. So we have the next slide. 
So uh, we are going to consider some theorems, right, for this video lesson. So we have um, the exterior angle theorem. Of course, you can't do this without the interior angle. Yes, so we have the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles. So at first, interior angles, they are actually angles inside, you know, that are enclosed inside this triangle. So the exterior one will be something outside. So the actual value of this exterior angle is a sum of two opposite interior angles. And they are the ones that are not close, that are not beside this exterior angle. So you can see them. So if this is actually 40, so that tells me that this can be 30 and 10, or this can be um, 20 and 20, or 25 and 15. You can see so but come what me once i had them together they should sum up to this exterior angle so this is one theorem that you need to know i believe it is very very easy and it's going to come and the uh, show you the next slide so we have the triangle sum theorem you know we'll, we'll be saying this over time so instead that the sum of the three interior angles of a triangle add up to 180 degrees so angle a angle b angle c actually had up to 180 degrees. So this is very basic and fundamental. So this is another theorem. I believe this is very easy and relatable. So the next slide. So we have the isosceles triangle, right? This is another theorem whereby we actually consider the isosceles concept and the equilateral concept. So let's look at the isosceles. So remember that a triangle is isosceles if it has at least two congruent sides, right? Two congruent sides. So um, take note very well. So you can see they call it leg here. You know, earlier we saw it as sides, uh -huh, okay? Some will refer to it as edges, so you can see the legs, right? So, when an isosceles triangle has exactly two congress sides, these two sides are the legs, so you can see. So, the angle formed by the legs is the vertex angle. So, by these two legs that actually come together, that are equal, that are congruent, you know, they actually form the vertex angle, or some presentation will tell you the vertical angle. So, whatever terminology you want to use, you are good to go. So, vertical angle or the vertex angle, that is uh, very appropriate. So, uh, we have uh, the, the third side is the base of the isosceles triangle. So, this is the base, right? And the angles here, they are actually um, equal, all right? So, and the two angles adjacent to the base. So, adjacent means, you know, they are running on the same parallel. So, um, the two angles adjacent to the base are called the base angle. So, this are the base angles and they are equal. So let's um, seek more information regarding the isosceles concept in triangles. Yes, so we have here, in any isosceles triangle, right, the angles opposite the congruent side are also congruent. So you can see this marks um, show you that um, these two sides, right, they're actually congruent. And these angles as well, they are congruent. So the congruent lengths, so you can see them, we have AC and BC. AC is equals to BC. And now the congruent base, so the angles there, they are the angle A and the angle B. They are actually also congruent. So the altitude CM bisects this vertical angle, this vertex angle, right? Okay? You can see which is angle C. And the altitude CM bisects the base AB. So it bisects this angle and also bisects AB exactly at the midpoint. You know, it split this into two, then also it does the same thing to this um, base side. So this is very relatable. The next slide. So we have the equilateral triangle concept or theorem to put. Okay, so if a triangle has three congruent sides, it must have three congruent angles. So if these three sides are equal, then the three angles as well should be equal. Similarly, if a triangle has three congruent angles, it must have three congruent sides. So once the three angles are equal, the three sides should be equal. Once the three sides are equal, the three side, the three angles as well should be equal. So you can see the flip, all right, and the flip are well balanced. Yes, the next slide. So still yet we have um, further expansion. You know, a triangle is equilateral if and only if it is equiangular, right? So look at um, this presentation. So you can see we have um, the side, the line segments or the side. Okay, let me just go on the line X, Y. Look at X, Y. X, Y, this is the sign of congruence, right? So X, Y is congruent to Y, Z. And the same thing, Z, X. Do we see that right there? So if angle x which is this is congruent to angle y it's congruent to angle z 
then we can say that angle X is also congruent to angle Y, then angle Z, exactly the same thing. So you can see the concept that runs here. I'm just trying to do a linkage between the two. Then definitely, you know, just the flip side of what we saw earlier. So if the sides are congruent, to put it in the exact fit that we have here, then definitely the angles should be congruent. And if the angles are congruent, then the sides should be congruent. That is exactly what you have in diagrammetric uh, expression right here. The next slide. So this is what we call the intercept theorem, right? So you recall that when we're working around transversal, so this is a transversal right here. This is a transversal. These are the parallel lines, right? So um, this is where the intercept actually forms. So this, right, you can see this covering here, or this expanse here, that is where we have our intercepts. You know, it's actually formed between the two parallel lines. So it is actually on the exterior, just like we have the um, interior concept that we dealt with earlier in the previous video so the same thing happens here so this is what we actually have as our intercept they are actually in between the parallel lines so anything elsewhere that is the exterior so that is another theorem that we should um, be aware of, or we should acknowledge just yes, the next slide so we have the midpoint theorem okay so the line which joins the midpoint of two sides of a triangle so you can see this is actually the midpoint of this side AC midpoint of the side AB right so this line that joins the midpoint you can see we identify or mark the midpoint of AB and AC with E and F respectively so let me take it again the line which joins this line which joins the midpoint of the two sides of a triangle these two sides right is parallel to the third side so this is parallel to this do we see that now okay and it's equal to half of the length of the third side so this the length of this is actually half of the length of this so if this from year to year is actually marked as three that means the length of this base will be six right because this is equal to the half of this so at first this line right is parallel to this and actually is the half of bc so you can see the expression that we have here. You can see line EF is parallel to line BC. And we can see that EF is actually the half of BC. So that is the implication of what we have right there. So the next slide. So we have the triangle proportionality theorem. So look at this, just like what we have earlier. You know, if you draw a line constructed parallel, constructed parallel to one side of a triangle, you know, it is intersects the other two sides of a triangle and divides the remaining two sides proportionally. So look at what is happening right now so look at side sc look at sc and cl look at s to c then c to l can you see that it's actually equal right to se look at se to el of course i'm going to use examples to explain this concept they are very very easy so you don't want to miss out so there's the next slide so still yet we're talking about the proportional part of parallel lines so look at another theorem right here so if three parallel lines intersect two transversa so these are the three parallel lines you can see them these are the three parallel lines okay then they divide the transversa proportionally all right so look at this if r is parallel to s and s is parallel to t you can see and they actually intersect this um, transversa you can see high and m right so this is basically what you are going to have. So notice this. You can see UW. Okay, this is UW. And look at Y, W, and Y. You can see that now. So you can see the expression from year to year, from year to year. So you can see that this UW and VX. What do you notice? UW and VX. You can see the expression right there. So it is um, just uh, well presented in plain sight. I'm going to use examples to buttress this concept. They are very easy. The next slide, please. Yes, so this is just a further revelation to what we just did now. So look at this. You can see the same angle produced here, the same thing I'm having right here. Do you see that? So we can see correspondence right there. So this is where the parallel lines are, that is where they become um, viable. So you can see the three parallel lines you have. One, two, three. And you can see the transversal. So you can see what they have produced. This that is being produced here is the same thing as this. So this is basically the work or the job of these three parallel lines. So we have examples, you know, to explain this concept very well. So you want to make sure that you have access to this full video lesson. And how do you do that? It is very easy. Just click on the link in the description below. This is going to get you to the My School website. 
right there you get to have access to your full subscription so do not delay do that right now and do not forget to hit the like button for us also click on the subscribe button and to always tap on bell notification for you to get informed immediately we upload the next video content just for you